This episode brought to you by ExpressVPN, the best VPN there is. Take back your online privacy today. Also brought to you by Mint Mobile, the first company to sell wireless services online only. Hello, I'm the Nostalgia Critic. I remember it so you don't have to. December? I should change. Question nothing. The answers would disturb you. Anyway, I'm excited because the Christmas season is back in full swing, and you know what that means. Ho ho ho! Merry Christmas! There, Santa Christ Band appears. On to the review. Ho! Actually, can you do old SC a favor? Damn it, news is more than a cameo. One of my disciple elves has always wanted to see the world. Hi, I'm Betty! Congrats. Follow your dreams and leave me out of it. She wants to learn how the real world operates. Dude, I make my living on the internet. The exact opposite of the real world. But think of all the comically cute possibilities! <sighs> I guess something funny could come of this. Good! See you in a week! A week?! Hey, who's this? I'm Betty, the Disciple Elf. Is this your TV? Um... Yeah. Oh, we don't have TVs at the North Jerusalem. Is this your magic wand to turn it on? I guess you could call it that. Oh, it's like a flat Christmas pageant, but they talk about things other than Christmas. You know, I'm not gonna lie, this is kind of adorable. Yeah, I wonder why Santa Christ was so eager to get rid of her. <laughs> the yellow sponge is talking. <laughs> Where the hell did that come from? Wow, what is this amazing invention I see before me? It's a pen! Wow, we only write with the spit of blueberry fairies. Really? Yes, and the feather of a reindeer angel for the quill. Maybe she just had a random spaz attack earlier. Yay! Pens are great! Yeah! What is going on here? Why is she acting so crazy? And what's with that laugh track? Well, it looks like before she was a disciple elf, she worked on Saturday Night Live. Oh, so sometimes she's entertaining us, and other times... She's entertaining a live audience. This is the happiest day of my life. And when I'm happy, I fart candy canes. Here you go. Wow. I mean, that's atrocious, but it's loving, too. Maybe we were too rough on it. I hate her. Good! You can have an emotional arc with her. Wait, I don't want to be the one to have to look after her. Why can't you do it? Okay, I'll look after her. My hand. <laughs> okay, so I'm really not shocked if somebody didn't like Elf. The 2003 smash hit put both Will Ferrell and John Favreau on the map as unlikely cinematic draws. The simple concept about an elf who's really a grown human being going to New York to find his dad sounds harmless enough, and to many it was. It won over a fair amount of adults and definitely a ton of kids, mainly from Will Ferrell's larger-than-life performance. But after years of being overplayed, overquoted, and yes, overshouted by millions of kids, the movie got on a lot of people's nerves. I remember seeing it and not really liking the movie as much as Farrell's performance. Now looking back almost 20 years later, it's both a little better and a little worse than I remember. Bottom line, when the movie is trying to be big, a clear influence, I think it's pretty likable. When it's trying to be early 2000s SNL, it's kind of a pain. As silly as it looks, it actually is an interesting film to look over, and that's what we're gonna do today. 
That is, if I don't get interrupted. What's that? That's you. <laughs> but the kids love her. Let's take a look at Elf. Bob Newhart plays Papa Elf, and right off the bat I can say while the story is fine, I don't think the writing is that great. Newhart can literally get a laugh pretending to be on the phone. He's perfected the art of saying, uh, better than Goldblum. I know what I said! Here, I'm ready to laugh at anything funny he says, and they literally give him nothing funny to say. You wasted your Newhart! Another interesting uh, uh, elf-ism. Uh, there are only three jobs available to an elf. I feel like I'm watching the geriatric porn parody. Except that would get more laughs! The look of the film is pretty fun, though. It looks like they use CG only when they have to in this opening, and the rest of the time they either create sets satirizing the old Rudolph specials, or they even use stop motion. Again, they almost never say anything funny, but represent, I guess. It's time to go to sleep. At an orphanage, Santa, played by a sometimes terrifying Ed Asner, Chips Ahoy, so I'm taking the kid. Accidentally gets a baby in his bag and brings him to the North Pole. Santa had a decision to make. Fortunately, when it comes to babies, Santa's a, a pushover. Meanwhile, the orphanage had him illegally declared dead after a few years, but the opening credits are cuter shown on greeting cards than milk cartons. They named the baby Buddy as he grows up over the years through some surprisingly well-aged effects, until he eventually becomes Will Ferrell. And yeah, for most people, he's either what makes or breaks this film, and honestly, I find I like him when he's legit believable. Yes, I use the word believable. It's clear humans and elves age differently in this world. He's still in school with little kids as a grown man. So most of the movie, he acts like a little kid, and when he plays that straight, it's kind of endearing. I thought the magical reindeer made the sleigh fly. And where did the reindeer get their magic from? Christmas spirit. Everybody knows that. I could easily see a little kid saying these lines that way. I'll also admit, I just find earnestness funny. And there are several times where his naive optimism wins me over. A lot of people down south don't believe in Santa Claus. What? Everyone thinks the movie is nothing but him yelling, but there are plenty of moments where he acts, dare I say it, a tad subtle. With that said, there are plenty of moments where he does scream, and they usually don't work. <laughs> Some do, thinking Santa is an imposter later in the movie. I buy that. This would be his reaction. But when he's told his biological father is on the naughty list... No! That's not how a little kid would react. That's Will Ferrell being wacky. And yeah, I'll be the first to say I'm one who's done a lot of over-the-top reactions, and I'm just gonna guess in the 15 years doing this, they haven't all worked. But the truth is, I do give credit to those who go big, because there is a lot to risk. A really quiet, subtle form of comedy is dry, respectable, and usually has a hard time getting noticed. Because of this, big reactions are seen as cheap, easy laughs. I get it. But that's the thing. If a quiet joke doesn't work, you usually don't risk that much. If a loud joke doesn't work, you look like an obnoxious ass. Not to say deadpan humor can't have its risks, but loud humor? You can lose your audience just as quickly as you can have them gravitate towards you. So I can't just dismiss when someone puts all their energy into a bit. But I can say when it wins me over and when it doesn't. And yeah, don't worry, we're still gonna address those moments. Once Buddy discovers the truth, he decides he should go to New York to find his biological father. And I'll just say it, I don't understand this joke. <laughs> Bye, buddy. Thanks, Mr. Narwhal. Yeah, I really thought Dr. Manhattan's dick was gonna rise up and kill him. Did that team forget a punchline? Buddy literally just walks from the North Pole to New York. Like I said, the story layout is pretty great. But I will admit, it could be a little meaner. Like this scene where he tries to hug a raccoon. Okay, he should have scratches on his face and be walking with a limp. That's what I mean when I say the writing needs to be a bit more cynical. Or how about this scene where he gets to New York and naturally you get a montage of all the things he doesn't understand. <laughs> all over town. Be to me, him laughing isn't that funny. What is funny is how is he gonna pay for that shoe shine? Imagine him saying he doesn't know what money is or he tries to pay him with a hug or candy or something and the guy whoops his ass or chases after him. That would have been hilarious. 
So many of these jokes are mistaking the setup for the payoff, and it does get distracting time to time. Yes, more of that, please. On that note, a lot of these scenes do kind of feel like dated prank videos and... Okay, let's just start it. Here's a count of all the moments that scarred parents because their kids try to reenact it in real life. Don't think actual puking isn't included. I hear some of this was improvised, which, again, really shows. I do feel like he has too much SNL at him at this point. Which is fine for a live show, but here... Oh, who am I kidding? This is subtle compared to what other New Yorkers do. He finally meets up with his dad, played by James Caan. And I'll admit, when I first saw it, I completely missed the comedic genius of this performance. When you're young, you're watching Feral. When you're older, you're watching Khan. Remember when I was saying there's an art to subtle reactions? Well, I'll just say it. Khan masters that more than Feral masters loud reactions. Feral's humor is hit and miss in this. Almost everything from Khan hits a perfect bullseye. If you were told he thought the camera wasn't rolling and this was his legit reaction to first seeing Feral in that costume... <laughs> Alright, uh... Let's get it over with. Wouldn't you believe it? James Caan looks like he's on his way to another set and this goddamn elf movie keeps screwing with him whenever he walks by. I don't even think he knows he's in a movie. It's like a bullfinger Christmas. Look at these reactions and tell me they're not gold. Where'd you get this picture? Papa Elf gave it to me. Dad? And go ice skating and, and maybe even hold hands. Come on, it's lovely when the yeah, together. Remember Steve Buscemi watching that landlord's dance in The Big Lebowski? Imagine that's a whole performance. He throws out Buddy, but he makes his way to a mall where they, of course, mistake him as an employee at Santa's Village. Again, you don't need much explaining there. That's surprisingly organic. With that said, really, Feral, you don't need to try this hard. <laughs> that one usually comes with a trip to the ER. That one too. And despite it being another scream, I do buy he would be excited Santa's coming there. Santa's coming to town! Santa! Oh my god! Yeah, okay, get five up there. But you do need to cut away faster, because it is almost looking like a horror film. Why are you smiling like that? I just like to smile. Smiling's my favorite. Can I kiss you? Speaking of which, Zoe Deschanel's nightmare eyes are in this too. With you. Oh my gosh, she should have been the scary thing in the happening. In fact, you're sure these genres weren't switched? I'm just trying to get through the holidays. This is Jovi, and she has the holiday blues, but Buddy tells her all she needs to do is sing to lift her spirits. I'm singing! I'm in a store and I'm singing! Being a parent in a world with this movie is hard. Buddy does get a chance to hear her sing as she showers in the ladies' room. What's in this train? Well, I can't enjoy this problematic scene. Oh, not because there's a man watching a woman shower, that's fine. But because she's singing Baby It's Cold Outside, enjoy voting for Trump movie! On that note, again, this is totally a horror film. You sure I didn't put on this elf? But it's cool, she forgives him ridiculously fast. You sure it had nothing to do with the fact that I was naked in the shower? I didn't know you were naked. We elves all shower together. Regardless of sex. In warm milk. It's kind of a cult. Well, anyway. You built this? They're kind of pissed about this. Really? Uh, no. Let's go back to the shower thing, cause, okay, on the one hand, I'm glad they don't waste too much screen time on this, it might have gotten a little boring, but on the other hand, he was watching her shower! She got past this way too quick! <laughs> Santa apparently arrives, but he doesn't put together it's all an act for the kids and gets angry at the imposter. Again, I think this scene works because it's believable and, yeah, a little mean. How can you live with yourself? Just cool it, Zippy. You sit on a throne of lies. Yeah, but that one's pretty funny. I'll let it slide. <laughs> He's an imposter! <laughs> 
also dig how these kids are horrified, but then start cheering when it gets violent. Again, they can see real comedy too. That's Santa Claus! That's the best! It's not Santa! Are you sure? Because strangely, the best Santa Clauses are violent. I have retreated to the mountains in order to find wisdom. What did I find? ExpressVPN. Weird I get internet connection up here, but that's just from all the newfounded wisdom I have now. Nah, 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 nah. For you see, using the internet without ExpressVPN is like taking a call on a train or bus on speaker for everyone to hear. You don't know who has access to your most private, sensitive information. So don't be that person. Be like me, half naked in the mountains. Oh, don't worry, it's only the bad parts that are naked. Here's why I use ExpressVPN half naked in the mountains. You don't have to be half naked in the mountains, but then you won't be as cold and afraid. Internet service providers know every single website you visit. And in the US, they can legally sell this information to ad companies and tech giants, who then use your data to target you. ExpressVPN creates a secure, encrypted tunnel between your device and the internet, so people can't peep on your online activity. Or if you're half naked in the mountains because you're so full of wisdom. I. I'm starting to hallucinate, but regardless, just fire up the app and click one button. It works on phones, laptops, even routers, so everyone who shares your Wi-Fi can be protected. No wonder it's rated number one by Business Insider and The Verge. I like using it so I can rest comfortably and not worry about my information being stolen. Instead, I can focus on my butt cheeks resting here on the snow. Sure, I can't feel them anymore, but think of it from the snow's point of view. Secure your online activity today at expressvpn.com slash nostalgiacritic and get an extra three months of ExpressVPN free. That's expressvpn.com slash nostalgiacritic. expressvpn.com slash nostalgiacritic. It's like a song. You know what I miss? Songs and music and warmth. Wisdom hurts, but I know what'll make me feel smarter, Mint Mobile. This holiday season, the best deal in wireless can be found at Mint Mobile. Right now, when you switch to Mint Mobile and buy any three month plan, you'll get another three months for free. As the first company to sell premium wireless service online only, Mint Mobile lets you order and activate from home with eSIM while saving tons on phone plans starting at just $15 a month. Am I supposed to see myself in my own breath? Has it actually gotten so cold it's reflecting back my image? Wow, I'm gonna die here. Good thing I have Mint Mobile. I've been using Mint Mobile long before this holiday deal, and I have to say, it's the perfect time to switch. With their buy three months, get three months free plan, I'm saving so much that I can now put towards holiday gifts. Not for my family, I left them long ago to live up here like an idiot. Is that cabbage flying or am I still hallucinating? No, it's real, it's gotta be real. That's I'm so full of wisdom real. Did I say yet that Mint Mobile's best offer of the year is here? For a limited time, buy any three month plan and get three more months free. By going online only with eSIM and eliminating the traditional cost of retail, Mint Mobile passes significant savings on to you. All plans come with an unlimited talk and text, plus high-speed data delivered on the nation's largest 5G network. The cabbage is talking to me sounds like J.K. Simmons. Use your own phone with any Mint Mobile plan and switch easily and effortlessly with eSIM. Or if you need a new device for a limited time, get six months of free service when you buy a select device and plan. Switch to Mint Mobile and get premium wireless service starting at just 15 bucks a month. You need that spelled out cabbage who wants pictures of Spider-Man? Okay. For a limited time, buy any three month Mint Mobile plan and get three more months free by going to mintmobile.com slash nostalgia. That's mintmobile.com slash nostalgia. Cut your wireless bill to 15 bucks a month at mintmobile.com slash nostalgia. Why yes, I would like to fly away with you, cabbage. Oh! Away! Oh my god, I can't fly! Watch Doug play Ratchet and Clank 2016 every Friday on Twitch. We also have content six days a week. Hope to see you there. bails him out of prison. Yeah, they cut the scene where he encounters a male prostitute wearing the same outfit. And upon research, he realizes he might be the son he never knew he had. Okay. Hi, I'm the script doctor, but I think the way things are going, I'll be the director by the end of this. Can I listen to your necklace? No, you can't. It, can you just sit still? Why is there a skeleton? I don't know. What, Walter, could you please? Like a pirate could you please? This is like a Rankin Bass version of Rain Man. <laughs> Fun fact, Khan apparently turned his head away from the camera because he was laughing so hard here. Again, I feel like this film is doing something right. It's a boy. When the blood test shows he is in fact his son, he takes him in to live with his family. Led by Mary Steenburgen, again desperately trying to elevate the afterthought role she was given. You like sugar, huh? We elves try to stick to the four main food groups. Candy, candy canes, candy corns, and 
syrup. I think the poster would look more like this if that was true. Are you crazy? He cannot stay here. Walter, he's your son. We don't even have enough money to put soda in our glasses. <laughs> Just put it on there. After leaving the Zool building, no really, that's the Zool building. Man, this could have been a different movie. Buddy hangs out with Michael, but is attacked by bullies with snowballs. <laughs> Jesus, there wasn't this much flying weaponry in Black Hawk Down. And I guess they used all the good effects in the opening because... <laughs> Don't worry, Favreau will get much better effects in the future, and all it'll cost him is a good movie. Copyright expired. His dad takes him to work, where we encounter Amy Sedaris, Kyle Gass, and Andy Richter. None of them allowed to be funny, but I'd be lying if I said I didn't like just seeing them. My two top writers, you came in here pitching me the idea of hiring another writer. Yeah. Also, I'm trying to become a thing. Please help me become a thing. He gets the mailroom dancing to whoop there it is because we're 1993. But again, it's worth it for Khan's underreaction. It cut away before he stormed off set. Admit it, every scene looks like that's about to happen. But he finally works up the nerve to ask Jovi out. And I guess their chemistry is pretty weak because I didn't even remember them going out in this. I'll give Zoe credit, she is trying hard to make all these scenes that would turn every woman away look charming and delightful. The trick is to not get your arm caught in the door! Okay, you feel comfortable. She's thinking, okay, in the final version, they are gonna CG him out with an alien, right? The next day, a big-time writer named Miles Finch, played by Peter Dinklage, tries to help Buddy's father with his dwindling business, and I won't lie, I had a ton of jokes ready about why this scene wouldn't age well. I didn't know you had elves working here. But it actually held up better than I thought. It works because there's two polar opposite mindsets fighting each other, and both are funny. You got Farrell earnestly thinking he's met someone from home and being really, really kind, and Dinklage thinking he's mocking him and honestly acting like a saint for the early moments. You're, you're hilarious, my friend. Does Santa know that you left the workshop? You know, we're all laughing our heads off. Then you got Dinklage snapping and going after him and Farrell completely confused about why this is happening. Why is his friend from home ripping him to shreds for his compliments? At Khan's performance, who has more layers in his reactions than creases on his forehead, and you get a pretty hilarious moment. He thinks he's an elf. Yeah, that'll fix it up. Sometimes this movie just works. Maybe the writing in this is better than I thought. It's not like they used the three laziest words in plot exposition. As you know, we need a big launch fast. Back in the shit pile. Dad. What is it? Buddy ran away. Thank God. Oh, I mean, thank God. If you want to keep your job, Hobbs, you will pitch me this book right now. We get that lame, your family or your job scene. Hobbs, you walk out of here and, 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 and you're finished at Greenway. You're finished! Or may I forever be a guy in a suit behind a desk for every movie I'm in? And they search for Buddy. Don't do it, George. You have a wonderful life. That's Buddy Clarence. Oh, screw it. He can jump. He randomly runs into Santa, whose sleigh is running low on magic because not enough people are believing. Will you fix it for me, buddy? I'll try. Okay, so I am impressed how quickly this film went by. Like, when we got to this point, I was kind of shocked we were here already. But on that note, this climax kind of drags. They're stuck in a visually dull area where either just looking at people looking at sled or looking at people looking at people looking at a sled or looking at people looking at people looking at people looking at a sled. Why is this exciting? I know you may be a little um, chemically imbalanced, but you've been right about a lot of things. That's a look Will Ferrell gives after being called chemically imbalanced a lot. Oh, and we randomly have villains all of a sudden. Only the Central Park Rangers now remain in the park. <laughs> These forces are highly trained, but rarely see action. Some accuse them of being too gung ho when called into duty. Did Favreau think this was his first Marvel movie? I wish Mickey Rourke was this threatening in Iron Man 2. Quick man, throw your flaming pumpkins at him. 
buddy, he's he's in the park with Santa. The sleigh won't fly because there's no Christmas spirit. There's no Christmas spirit because people are terrified of Zoe's death glare. Your eyes are like Cyclops. Keep them closed. Keep them closed. It's the real Santa. He needs our help. Hey, Michael, are you okay? Zoe, you can tell us you thought this movie was gonna bomb, didn't you? That's why you're phoning in this third act. Best way to spread Christmas cheer is singing loud for all to hear. Check you better watch out. You better not cry. You better not cry. My God, such a booming voice of indifference would silence any New York street corner on Christmas Eve. She gets everybody singing and the news records it because they don't report the news anymore. They just kind of leave the camera on and hope something happens. Yeah, it's not that far-fetched. But Buddy's dad's refusal to sing is the only thing stopping the sleigh from taking flight. Because Elf, I don't know. Santa Claus is coming to town. Yeah, one decompetation later. <laughs> Guess somebody asked for the Polar Express soundtrack this Christmas. I knew Deschanel was a CG puppet in all this. Santa delivers a Merry Christmas, Buddy's dad writes a children's book that becomes a slightly less annoying Broadway musical, and our two main characters' complete lack of chemistry gives birth to a baby girl. Oh, uh, I was in this. I don't know, I wasn't funny, bye. And that was Elf. I get why a lot of people don't like it. There's a lot of things I don't like about it, but it works just enough for me. Yes, the writing could be a lot funnier, and it has its fair share of awkward moments, but the performances of Farrell and Khan do eventually pull it through. When Farrell seems sincere, it really works, and when he reaches too far for a joke, Khan is there to pull it back to where it gets a laugh again. Make no mistake, if I had to watch it over and over year after year, it'd probably get on my nerves too. But as a once in a while flick, I think it's serviceable enough. It's not one of my personal favorites, but I remember having a good enough time where I say, I'm not going to watch this every year, but maybe every five years. Five, five, ten, ten, every ten years. Yeah, that, 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 that sounds good. Speaking of which, how's our Disciple Elf doing? I now pronounce you Disciple Elf and wife. What the hell did I miss? Hey, critic, this is Zoe. I met her today, and now we're married! Hello. You did all that in the past 20 minutes. It was love at first sight. She screamed. She stalked me in the shower. She screamed. She ran around in circles. She screamed. It was magic. And Malcolm, are you licensed to marry anyone? No, but they didn't seem to care. Come, darling. Let me sing okay-ish while you howl at the top of your lungs. You have ears! <laughs> She's so romantic. What, they can beam away? I don't know. Hey, Michael, are you okay? It's Cameo for Charity, and this month we're doing Toys for Tots. So if you want a video of me saying happy birthday, merry Christmas, congrats, or whatever, go ahead and click on the link below and know you'll be giving to a good cause. With that said, I usually do Toys for Tots for December, and part of that is because of this funny story that happened when we were shooting the review of Christmas with the Craigs. I share it every year, and this year is going to be no different. Hey everybody, Doug Walker here doing the charity shout out, and I have a funny story for you. Uh, when we were shooting this review, we were outside about to shoot a scene with uh, Nostalgia Critic and Santa Christ, and this car pulls up, and they pull right into our parking spot, and we don't recognize the people, and they get out, and we say, Can we help you? And they say, uh, Toys for Tots. I drop it off Toys for Tots. Uh, no, 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 we're not Toys for Tots. And they're looking at us like, Are you sure? And we said, yeah, we're sure. Why would we know where Toys for Tots are? And they said, well, because you got a guy dressed like Santa Claus there. Oh, no. <laughs> Un unrelated. Amazing. Totally unrelated. So, bizarrely enough, they were driving around looking for Toys for Tots, and we happened to come outside with a guy dressed as Santa Claus. What are the chances? <laughs> And I took it as a sign. There you go. So click on the link in the description, get a cameo from me, and be giving to a wonderful organization. Donate to Toys for Tots. Yes, it's a good organization. <laughs> Santa Christ approves. <laughs>